Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock and I am an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube and today I'm going to bring you the second in the 24 Tags of Christmas series for 2016. Every year I do six videos in a row with tag ideas and this year is no different. These are all ones that are going to be linked at the end of the video so you can watch all the rest of them as well. And I do a giveaway of all of the tags. So there are going to be 24 winners selected from here on YouTube as well as over on my blog. Winners will be announced on my blog after the week is all over. I'm going to make an extra thick shaker card today using the Happy Holidays stamp set from Avery L. with this puppy that looks a little bit like one of mine. And I've got it stamped onto a rectangle of Ranger Distress watercolor paper. And I've cut it with the outside frame in this die set from Avery L. as well. And I've made frames out of it by just die cutting them together and just tape them together so I could get them nice and even. The black is VersaFine Onyx Black, which is a waterproof ink. And now I'm going to stamp in VersaMark, which is a clear sticky ink. I'm going to stamp all the snowflakes because I want the snowflakes to be white, so I want to emboss them. And I'm putting the Hero Arts embossing powder on, but what I noticed was that some of the black ink was not completely dry. So I'm just going to take an old brush and remove some of that from the black ink. If you don't get it all off and you end up with little flecks of white on there, you can just go over it with a Sharpie after you're all done. And that will fix any of those areas where you got some powder on there. I'm a real stickler for not wanting to have powder showing where I don't want it to. And then I use my Wagner heat gun um, from Hero Arts to heat set everything in place. And you may notice that it's offset a little bit. I wanted my puppy to sort of peek in from the side. The frame is going to cover up much of this from the side edge, so I don't need to color all the way to the outside edge. But I'm using some Zig Clean Color Markers to add some color to this. And I'm going to use a darkish turquoise kind of color at the base, and I'm going to blend it into a lighter color up toward the top. It actually turned out I didn't need to color this side over on the left that I'm coloring right now. Actually, it looks like it's on the top since it's colored sideways. And I didn't even need to stamp my, my snowflakes over there because they're going to be covered up. But if you were to make multiples of these, you would realize exactly how far you needed to go with your coloring and with your stamping uh, before you finished all of them. So do a prototype and check and see exactly how much work you have to do because you could save yourself some extra effort since th those areas are going to be covered up when I do my shaker card. So with these Zig markers, they blend a lot better than other markers. They're water-based markers and they, they do blend with each other. I'm going to show you some different techniques for blending in this video as well. Some tip-to-tip -tip types of things, but they blend fairly well on this paper. I chose to blend them in an area where there's already snowflakes too, so even if I don't end up getting it perfect, it's okay because the snowflakes are going to cover that. I'm going to use a warm gray to color the two spots over the eyes. That's where my, my little girl Vienna has black ears and black spots on both of her eyes. And then the rest of her body is white aside from a little black spot on her tail. Kind of wish there was a tail on this stamp so that I could add a little black spot there and it would really be her. But I wanted to have a little bit of a gray in there. I didn't want to use a really darker gray color. I just wanted a little bit more. So I'm going tip to tip from one marker to another so I can pick up a little bit of color from one. If you're concerned about contaminating the marker nibs, which I'm not really particularly because these are brush nibs and they clean off really easily, you can just scribble them off on scratch paper. This doesn't ruin the tips at all like it might for some foam nib markers. So I can just add a little bit of extra color. I do find on this Ranger Distress watercolor paper, which I'm trying to use up, I had a bunch of it and I'm not a big fan of it, but it works well for these Zig markers. So I'm uh, trying to use this up for making a bunch of tags and cards and things for this Christmas so I can reclaim that space in my craft room. But I do find that if I want to blend with it, it often helps to do the lighter color first and then the darker color over and then go back in and blend again with the light. So if you put down the dark first, sometimes it's a little hard to get away that, get that hard edge to disappear. So here I'm putting my lighter red down first and then my darker red, because then if I go back in with my lighter red, I'm going to be able to soften a little bit of that color. 
doesn't necessarily need to when you're doing fabric lines like this, but you can see it did soften it some where it might not have otherwise. I wanted some hard edge little um, insides to the ears, so I waited until I was finished to put some of that black color in there. But I wanted a little bit extra color down here at the bottom to just add a little bit of depth and put a little shadow down here at the bottom of the, the little spots over the eyes. Just to give it a little bit more and blend out a few areas. And Puppy is just about done, so I got my white Signo gel pen out. Love that pen. I use that so much during the winter, so I've ordered a, uh, another half dozen extras to make sure I have cards or uh, pens to use for all my cards that I make during the holidays. So now I'm going to assemble my shaker. And first, I'm going to put some acetate on the front of the frame, on the back of the front of the frame. And that I'm adhering using some really thin Be Creative tape. That's going to hold it really, really firmly. And then I took my roll of foam tape and I just cut kind of horizontally down the line of tape so I could create thin pieces and go all the way around the edge of my shaker. Now, depending on the size of the stuff you're putting into the shaker, you may or may not want to add an extra layer of shaker in it. But one thing that I do find helpful is when I put my layer down is to use a little bit of this powder tool. It's going to take the sticky away from that inside edge on the sticky stuff there so that my all the little things that I put in it, whether I put beads or sequins or whatever, aren't going to stick to it. Now, I decided since I wanted to use some thicker shaker bits because I have some larger sequins I thought I'd try in here, I wanted to make a second layer of this. I wanted to make it really thick so I, the stuff has room to run around in there. So I'm just going to put an extra layer now, a second layer of the foam tape all the way around the edge. And I just have them already pre-cut so they're in little pieces like this. And I can just add it so it's going to make it a little deeper and give me a little bit more room for my items to shake around because there's nothing more annoying than making a shaker card and finding that the stuff stays in one place because it's not thick enough. And I ran the powder tool around it again so I wouldn't get the sticky in the inside there and added my sequins and beads and fun little things. These are all from Pretty Pink Posh. And now I'm going to place my, my image face down directly onto all that adhesive and then line it up so make sure to get the edges just right. And I have lots of room now to shake around all my little bits in there. Isn't that cute? So on this one, I also wanted to add Happy Holidays. The Holidays, the second part of the sentiment. So I took some Be Creative tape and I used another die from the same die set, which you'll notice has little pierced markings around it, which adds just a little bit more detail to the die cut. Very, very cute. I also decided to wrap the package. So I've wrapped it in tissue paper that was stamped with the dogs. So I've got the little dogs and you can barely see them. The snowflake color that I chose was a little too light. I thought it was going to dry a little bit better, but it was wet ink when I put it onto the, the tissue paper. So I didn't know it was going to dry back that light, but it's still cute. And I made a couple of them. So I have four to add to the giveaway. And if you want to Enter the giveaway, leave a comment in the doobly-doo down below. You can leave an extra one over on my blog as well and qualify to perhaps win one of these 24 tags. If you're coming here on the first day that this launches, then only this one and yesterday's will be live. But if you come later, then all of these annotations will be live. There's also a 2014 and 2015 playlist for last year's and the year before's tags. So if you're a tag person and want some more ideas, they are there for you. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.